Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. And I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on October 7th, 2019. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news shows each and every Friday morning. We read all the news. So you don't have to. And in case you didn't hear the news in that opener, we have a new partnership here at Marketing O'Clock that we are excited for. We are now part of the Search Engine Journal Network. Awesome. So we are going to be continuing our new shows and be part of the SEJ team. Known them for a long time. Great people, Lauren, Brent, Janice is fantastic. And we are just very excited to be teaming up as part of their network, a network partner. Yes, we're really looking forward to working with the SEJ team. And to celebrate this partnership, we're doing a giveaway, giveaway alert. We yes. Have, yes, some beautifully made, I think I heard tri-blend. Tri-blend. That's how you know it's good. Yes. Three blends. Mm -hmm. Co-branded Marketing O'Clock and SEJ t-shirts for some loyal Marketing O'Clock listeners or some new Search Engine Journal audience members who are listening to our show for the first time. We have about a dozen shirts to give away, but don't worry if you don't get a shirt, we also have some really rad stickers. Greg called them rad, right? Yeah, they're, they're awesome. We, they're, they're fun stickers that we have. Regardless of what industry you're in, if you do PPC, we have PPC for E and a heart, like mm -hmm. something you would carve onto a tree. We've got SEOMG stickers. They're cool. So even if you don't win the shirt, head over to searchenginejournal.com. Get in the entry. We've got a Google form over there. We're going to give away a dozen shirts. And if you don't win the shirts, you're going to get stickers, brand new stickers. Yep teamed up with the SEJ collab. So we're Something very excited. Something for everyone. Exactly. And they believe in our product, so we're super excited. And additionally, this is going to make us keep doing this, which is something that's been a priority. Obviously, having some sponsors will help us uh, along the way. And it's something that our main goal is to keep your earlobes happy. Mm -hmm. And this will allow us to do that. So we are beyond pleased with this overall. And speaking of that, we actually have a sponsor for our first show. Our first sponsor, Optio. And Optio is a tool for Google Ads managers that helps to automate some of those time-consuming manual tasks. And we actually have a smoking deal for you folks here after we get through our first news, only for the Marketing Clock listeners. Yes. So we are very excited. And if this is the first time that you've heard the podcast, A, you're missing out, but B, we're glad to have you. And my name is Greg Finn. I work on the paid ad side and the search side, the organic search side. And I am Christine Zernheld. Sometimes people call me Shep around here. Doesn't really make any sense. Her, it's my maiden, maiden name. Her maiden name yeah. was Shep. And Shep, basically. <laughs> I specialize in content marketing and paid advertising. And our other triplet is Jess Bud. She's not here today. She recently took a class and then made a human <laughs> and is out dealing with said newborn human. So there's 70 or so episodes. You can scroll back through if you want to get a little dose of Jess. It will be to your delight, I promise you. And we have our fabulous sound engineer, millennial slash Gen Z, depending on the source. She's either a millennial or Gen Z. Hope. Who, I'm a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> who Hello. joins along as well. We have an after show where we don't talk about marketing. So we are glad you're here with us. We run through main news, we have segments, we have a lightning round, and we make sure that we leave you with some tangible takeaways, either tools or articles that you should check out each and every week. We're glad to have you. Shep, let's get to the news. Yeah, let's get right into it. We have some awesome news from the tracking world this week. Google Tag Manager is launching a community template gallery. We've been waiting for this. So Google Tag Manager is a tool. If you don't know, you can use it to track user behavior on your website with JavaScript and HTML tags. These tags are fired into Google Analytics, and you can get more information about what people are doing on your website. And for our new listeners, it really saves a lot of time if you don't have the development resources that some folks have. It gives you this container. You can add things in, and this new feature is awesome. Yeah. So this is going to save you even more time because... You save time by Googling, <laughs> how do I do this tag in Google Tag Manager? Yep. And you find usually Simo Hava's blog. It's always Simo. Simo's <laughs> the top of every, of every SERP that you find. And he'll tell you how to set it up and you're copying and pasting. But now we have this template library. So this is open to anyone who uses GTM and users will be able to share tag templates 
through this tool and you can get in on the fun by sharing your own templates in the gallery, but there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. So one thing is that not all templates will be published. If you don't adhere to the style guide or there's something similar out there, don't expect your template to be published. But I think that's kind of good news because I don't want 20 of the same thing in there. I just want to find the best one. Another thing that you need to keep in mind that they don't say in this announcement from GTM is that you also need to be fairly familiar with GitHub. You need to create a GitHub repository in order to submit a template. And Simo Hava is to the rescue again because he is this awesome guy that he published the day they made the announcement that tells you how to get started with GitHub. It's a really great tool. An example of how you could see this working is Data Studio. There's a lot of different templates out there that you can pull off of and just start kind of rolling full speed. If you look at analytics, there's templates you can pull off off there. I love the attribution templates. I love seeing other people's attribution in the library there. This is just like that for GTM. This is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, just in time for the holiday season, Google has upgraded their pay-to-play product, Google Shopping. I had to add that in there. But the new look Google Shopping is a cleaner look, a sleeker look, and it actually has a few more bells and whistles than before. The biggest thing for consumers, you'll be able to find products and prices in local stores, which, I mean, to me, that's the biggest thing. I, I guess may vary based on your consumer habits, but I like the fact that you can look for the, a product specifically. And they, the example they had was for a board game called Code Name. And you could put in the, the code name, and then you could find out the prices, and then you could find out where it was locally to you. Uh, the, Google's been playing around with that for, um, for a while with more on the tech side of things and, and where that is, but it, it's a very nice look now with Google Shopping. Do you play board games, Shep? I used to a lot more. I like more open-ended ones. I don't know anything about code names, but I like ones where everyone submits an answer and you have to guess who says what. Oh, like apples to apples? Well, I have this kind of version of apples to apples. I think it's called, I don't remember what it's called, but it's apples to apples, but you write in your own answer. Oh. Oh. So it's funnier. And then it just goes off the rails. It seems like- Oh, it's called Loaded Questions. Okay. Loaded Questions. It's really fun. Nice. I like my fair game's Carcassonne. It's a a board game, but the (laughs) board, you don't really have a board. You have tiles. It's really cool. Well, let's have a giveaway or something. super cool. It's amazing. It, it's very strategic. It makes your brain hurt. It, it's terrible. That's not what you awesome. want in a game. No, it's terrible. <laughs> um, but my wife and I were playing about first to 10. She won nine games in a row, and I've come back. I think it's nine to nine to six now. Uh, I started studying and cheating, playing the app, trying to win. That doesn't sound like you. Yes, yes it, it does. does. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway... The only issue I had with this, uh, oh, another thing you can get with the new update, you can also get price changes, which is pretty cool. So you can see when a price on a product moves up or down, you can sign up and be alerted. So that is nice, and that may also be a big feature for some folks. The one thing I did not like about this is the new buy on Google logo. So with this announcement, they came out with the logo that is essentially... A sort of rainbow shopping cart that's got blue bottoms and wheels and a blue plus sign inside of it. It almost looks like a eyes at the bottom when I when I look at it. But when you click on this, <laughs> it's got a shopping cart with a plus, and it shows up in in a very small pixelated fashion on top of product images. And when you hit this plus shopping cart icon, nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's misleading. You think. There's a plus sign in a shopping cart that it should add to cart. All that I can see now that you said that is the eyes. It, it looks, looks like, like eyes with a really like, weird unibrow and it, bangs. Yeah, it looks like it's the exploding head emoji, <laughs> but just the top half of it, if you look at it. Not a good look. So I think they they really shoehorned the colors in there. The Google Shopping logo is awesome. It's a, it's a tag now with a G in it. It's really cool. It kind of looks like an old Windows logo. But this one, get rid of it. We don't want it. It's confusing. And it's way too small, too. They're trying to do way too much in too small of a pixel space. But that is live now. So you can shoot over to shopping.google.com to see it in action. And you can, if you want to, just choose buy on Google um, as a filtering option if you'd like. And the other big piece of news people are talking about this week came from Instagram. They have a new tool. I think you meant to say Instagram from Facebook, as you remember, in August. Facebook came out and rebranded everything to be Instagram from Facebook. My apologies. WhatsApp 
from Facebook. Instagram from Facebook. Thank you. Has a new tool for brands that want to build excitement around product launches and increase e-commerce sales through the Instagram checkout. So brands can add a set reminder CTA to posts. If a user clicks this reminder, they'll see the product details and then they can choose to get a notification just before the product launches. There's also a product launch sticker that brands can add to their story and users can now opt in to be reminded by the products right when they're released which seems kind of exciting based on the way social media is going these days. But it is only allowed right now for a select number of brands. They're testing this. And when I saw the list of brands, I thought it was quite interesting. And I'd like to hear from both Hope and Greg. Ooh. Because I think your answers are going to be very different. Is this multiple choice or open-ended? No, I just want... Okay, so brands. there list are a brands. lot on there. Okay. I have a can, few can that I'm going to highlight. Can I start or I get next to Let's give you five guesses. Okay. To see I'm if you can start. get one of these like 20. Hope you're next. I'm going to go with Nike. No. Um, Lululemon. No. Okay, I'm thinking millennial now. I don't know if you can actually ship these, but I know they made a Super Bowl commercial. I was thinking geared toward millennial and Gen Z, Hope, maybe... California avocados, except I don't think they ship those. <laughs> Are so, you kidding me? So maybe, so I'll go, my guess will be Adidas. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Nike. All right. You got to beat there. this or you Adidas. lose hope. What do you got? Should I go sports? Reebok? Reebok. I don't think Reebok's on there, no. People yeah. that wear Reebok are not allowed on Instagram from Facebook, Hope. So Matt Southern did include the entire list on here, which I just thought was the most interesting part of the story, who Instagram thinks need this. Because I was surprised Kylie Cosmetics wasn't on it or Skims or something. What's Kylie Kymetic what brands Cosmetics? Are on I would think the What's Kardashians Skims? would be on it. Skims is Kim Kardashian. Her new shapewear line. Shape line. Shapewear solutions. Whoa. Okay. So Adidas <laughs> is like the only, okay. Adidas is on there. Revolve is on there. You should have guessed that hope. Okay. That makes sense. Warby Parker. Okay. Lots of cosmetics companies. NYX. I want to say Benefit was on there, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Okay, but then they have At Fresh Prince, which is a random French Prince of Bel-Air merch line that they were talking about <laughs> on the Today Show this week. Is this endorsed by Will? Or yeah, he's brands? all over it. It's like okay. gym uniforms from the Fresh Prince. They got it. Is Carlton getting any cash on this or no? <laughs> I don't think so. Remember, he sued Fortnite recently for that dance move, so he oh, must yes. really need some cash. Okay. I hope he's on it. I hope he hooked up with the At Fresh Prince people. I hope so too, because he really needs some money. Soul Cycle, what are you buying the leggings to wear to class? These are the weirdest brands. Maybe you can just, sign up for class on the app. Yeah, I don't how's know. Peloton not on here? Everybody on social media has Pelotons. You have to in order to get an account, I thought. I hope if you're buying a $20,000 bike, you're not <laughs> buying it through Instagram. Okay. Then there was one, it looked like gel, but it's JE11 shop. It's Julian Edelman's new gear line. He's I, big on how Instagram. How did he get on there? He's huge. On, it, Julian Edelman's. Instagram is sneaky good. You probably would never watch it because your husband's a Bills fan. We're located here in Buffalo. <laughs> but his Instagram is sneaky awesome. The other one I noticed was this Chinatown market. It's like $50 t-shirts with smiley faces. I don't understand. I was hoping Hope would, but I guess she doesn't. All right. That does it for today's news. Today's show is brought to you by Optio. Optio helps Google Ads managers automate time-consuming manual tasks so you can spend more time doing strategy, creative work, Whatever you please, shop, whatever you please. They make awesome recommendations with the marketer in mind. They're not just trying to get more money out of us. They're really making recommendations that are going to move the needle for our campaigns, which is awesome. And they explain why they're making the recommendations, which I also really love. Like, I feel like when you're training, you should just log into Optio and look at what it's recommending for the different accounts. Yeah, they inform you. And one of my favorite things is they'll tell you which ad should be paused because they're losing but they tell you why on a totally different metric than what Google uses. They'll show not click the rate, not the number of conversions, but overall the estimated number of conversions that you get per impression. So if you're really trying to ramp up an account, this is super helpful. They'll say, add A, we'll get you many more conversions per impression. Go with that if you'd like. And you can say no if you don't want to either. No problem. They make it easy. And if you want to automate it, hit a button and Optio will implement it for you. So why try Optio? Why? Well, you get 30 days free, but wait, there's more. <gasps> Optio is offering a special six week trial to listeners of Marketing O'Clock. So join people like Domino, Spotify, and heck, the people that really count us mm -hmm. here at Marketing O'Clock. Oh yeah. And try Optio out. Head over to optio.com forward slash marketing o'clock to get started. Six full weeks at O.P. 
opteo.com forward slash marketing o'clock. That's opteo.com slash marketing o'clock. Check it out, people. You'll love it. You will. And that brings us to this week's take of the week. And we read a take that we find on the internet without commentary. We never have opinions. We just Here. let it sit and settle. Right. You make the call. This week's take comes from the one, the only, Ross Hudgens. At Ross Hudgens on Twitter from Siege Media. He's got great content. I think he has a video show that also turns into podcast form, so check it out. And Ross is a great guy out in San Diego, I think. I don't know, probably everywhere at this point from <laughs> Siege Media. And they've got a great video channel. We'll put it in our show notes. And I think it even goes into podcast form. But what Ross said was, Crazy to think about how much time and money has been wasted trying to get to number one for sites who were meant to be four through six based on query intent. Sometimes the best SEO strategy is humility. Focus on the topics you can win. Be okay with being on the radar for those you can't. Wow. Period. I don't want to give an opinion, but I agree with this. I do too. This is a great take. <laughs> this is a fantastic take. And, and as client facing company that we are, we many times have these impossible asks. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is not what we do. This is not, how are you going to show up for something you, that, that is not you? Humility. That's all you need to know. My mom yeah. says it all the time. Thank you, Ross, for that phenomenal take. <laughs> all right. And that brings us to this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into two parts, paid and non-paid. I cover everything to do with advertising, aka paid, and Greg covers the organic, aka non-paid. Here's what's happening in the paid universe this week. First up in paid news, Shopify announced this week that they will now be integrated with Microsoft Advertising. The platform formerly known as Bing Ads. Thank you, Greg. Merchants using Shopify marketing can now expand their reach to the Microsoft network, including Yahoo, AOL, and partner sites right from the Shopify platform. Quick, quick question. Can I not have those? <laughs> Can I not have those partner sites? Could I just stick with Microsoft advertising? I'd like that. You'd have to log in to check it out. I haven't done it yet. I love when people add those things on that you just don't want. You don't like, want oh, Yahoo? Yeah, maybe you don't I want can AOL. Do AOL? No, no, no need for AOL. I'm good. Just Bing. That's all no. I need. Unless you can get your name on those CDs. They keep, do they keep sending those out? I'm sure they do. <laughs> Yeah, put, put the, laser etch me on those CDs coming out. That's what I want. So this new feature allows you to set up, optimize, and track the results of your campaigns alongside your store management dashboard in Shopify. So this seems like it'll be awesome for people who want to expand their Shopify efforts onto the Microsoft Advertising Network. Always good. And next up... We have an article from Peter Kafka at Vox who gets right to the point in the headline saying the two companies that place all of those ads at the bottom of web pages are combining. Can I rewrite that article quick? Okay. Monster merger. <laughs> two companies team up for world domination and you won't believe what happens next. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like these ads for me are always about like heart problems or something. I don't, they're just, they're not, they must not be targeted at all. I hope. And it'll be like a black and blue foot that looks dead. <laughs> dead <laughs> like if your foot dead looks foot. like this. Dead foot. <laughs> if your foot look, looks like this, you should, you don't get the medical ones. I don't get dead feet ads. No. Oh gosh. I get weird things. I, usually it's more like, you won't believe what this celebrity <laughs> looks like 16 later, sixteen years later. That's usually what I get. Mine's always like, see your doctor before <laughs> oh it's gosh. too late. Oh my gosh. So Taboola and Outbrain are two companies that put those ads at the bottom of news articles and they are merging. Some of them at the end of this actual article from Vox, which is pretty funny because the author keeps referring to them throughout it and it, he does a pretty good job with it. It's funny. And a lot of people saw this coming. It's not a huge surprise. They're calling it a merger, but they're keeping the Taboola name, which I think is good. Taboola has a better logo and it's pretty fun to say. So I'm happy about it. Um, some publishers are concerned that this merger would not be good for them and they might lose some of their leverage as there's only one company doing it now, which of course means there could be some antitrust concerns here. So we'll have to see what happens. Can I come up with a, a, a impromptu name for them? Okay. Not Tabula, not Outbrain, Toot Brain. <laughs> Toot Brain. 
Merge it up. Toot brain. I'm sure that'd be great for them. Okay, perfect. <laughs> It's free. You can have it. And next up, Google Ads is making it easier to analyze performance across multiple accounts using Report Editor. The Report Editor in Google Ads Manager accounts now displays cross-account data that users can view in real time. And this allows marketers to identify cross-account patterns in their data without leaving Google Ads. This feature can be used for up to 10 accounts right now, and Google says they plan to increase that limit in the future. So this seems like it could be really cool for people who have accounts in like a lot of different countries, but it's one brand and they can look at trends for the different accounts at once. Yeah. Anything with trends. You could even be a local company and let's say you've got, you're a company here in Buffalo and you're looking at all the different locations and you're trying to see just the overall demand year over year and looking at impressions and what's going on. That's cool. You can see everything in one spot with this new feature. So I, I love it. If you got different ads accounts, you can see them all in one spot. Love it. Fave it. Awesome. And finally, we have some exciting news from LinkedIn. They have added the audience forecasting information directly into the campaign manager dashboard. When you say exciting news from LinkedIn, I just think of a stock photo of somebody giving a thumbs up, like a <laughs> business meme saying, yes. Don't ever call the deal. me a business meme. That is the worst insult. You're a business meme with this article. But so this is continue. really cool. This isn't just people talking on LinkedIn. So basically, as you build your audience in a LinkedIn campaign... This forecasting panel, sh panel shows up on the right-hand side, and it'll show you the size of the audience you're building, which happens on other platforms as well, and it'll show you the forecasted spend, which I'm sure will be very high. And you'll also be able to customize the forecasting panel to see demographic breakdown as you're building the audience. So you can click company size, and it'll say this many people in the audience you're building work at companies of 10,000 plus or 5,000 plus. And maybe you want smaller companies, so you'll just exclude that 10,000 plus category right then. And this is real time? Yes. Like nice. as you're building it, you never have to spend a dime on them. Um, you can also so filter by seniority, years of experience, job function, industry. There's a few other demographic categories. This is definitely something that I'm excited to use. And we as a company, Cypress North, just put out an article, Cole over here, put out an article on how to exclude some of these people. But now you can see how to exclude while you're building the campaigns. I mean, that's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. So when on other platforms, you might say demographic and you could think age, gender, creepy stuff that you don't want to segment by. But on LinkedIn, it's great information about people's job function and information that could be really valuable for the products you're advertising. And as we all know, LinkedIn can be very expensive. So anytime we're segmenting the audience as we build it, that can be great. We'll never spend any money on them that we don't want to. They also announced Boolean, which I did not look up how to pronounce before the show or, and or targeting for building audiences. Andrea Cruz spotted this in the wild from the fabulous co-marketing. Yes, indeed. She spotted this in the, in the wild a couple of months ago and tweeted it. So we reported on it a couple weeks ago, but now they're announcing it and you'll be able to, when you're building your audience, do that and or distinction, which gives you a lot more control, which is always awesome. And they also announced that you'll be able to be sponsored in mail opens and video views at the demographic level as well. So they're giving us all this information about that demographic data, which we love. And that is it for paid this week. What's going on in non-paid? Over non-paid, we have a lot of news this week. First off, folks, it is here. We have reached peak stupidity. Just like Instagram from Facebook had been testing, hiding the like counts, Facebook is now doing the same. Apparently, as a society, we can't have... <laughs> numbers. It's just too much for us all. So we all have to be the same. No posts are better than others. Nobody can get their feelings hurt. So Facebook is apparently testing this out. You can check it out. The article over on Search Engine Journal. People disagree with you there, Greg. No, the whole point of social media is to be social. And if more people like something, that is a signal that is helpful. We don't need it for you versus me who got more likes on this picture. But I disagree to the fact that if we've got this show is a banger. Everybody listening knows, right? <laughs> Maybe this is better than the last one where it was a simple announcement about, hey, this is on Monday, as you now can hear. That's what I'm saying for content. I still think likes should be a thing, but okay. it's okay when they're hidden. I, it's okay. okay. I like how they do it for video views. You, you have to like click to see it. 
Okay, that's that's fine. But just as it on the record, I want to be perfectly clear. We we run an after show that we don't talk about on a normal show, or we don't talk about marketing. And a few weeks back, I talked about marketing, came up with an idea about a social network that amplified those numbers, where you put a necklace on, you'd be walking around the grocery store, and you got a like, and everybody could see it. That is that's an, what's coming next. No, that is you that take show away with Miley Cyrus. You take away everything. <laughs> you take away all the likes. Guess what? The next network coming through is going to amplify the likes. It's going to it's going to be the number network. Where it's just numbers. Everything is a number. It's data. That's what it's going to be next. It's called the Twilight Zone. Okay. Twilight Zone coming soon. We need to start that. <laughs> get Cuban on the blower. We got to get this going. <laughs> All right. Next up is something that Facebook has determined is another great idea called Threads from Instagram. <laughs> which then by proxy would be threads from Instagram from Facebook if you go with the proper naming scheme. So threads from Instagram from Facebook is a new camera-first messaging app that helps you, <laughs> helps you stay connected to your close friends. And it will allow you, if you'd like, to auto-message your friends when something is happening. So say you're on the move, you can have that auto message your friends. It'll overlay Why? the ability when you take a picture with a few taps to send that picture instantly to your friends so you don't have to leave to different apps. But the big thing is that auto status, I think, where you can see there's a car and it says on the move automatically when you move somewhere. And apparently this is taking off to combat Snapchat and the messaging features. Snapchat's not doing as well as Instagram anyway. That's why I don't get. This sounds like a cool idea if they're marketing it for kids as like a different. For kids? Yeah, like that's the only thing I can think about. All these social networks are getting in trouble for marketing towards kids or cyberbullying or, or whatever. Hey, we have this great side project for 13-year-olds who want to be on Instagram but don't want everyone to see their stuff. That's okay. fine. But who else would use this? It sounds like something your parents make you use. I'm going to go on record saying Greg <laughs> Finn in 2019 is saying, don't let your kids auto update their status when they're moving. You don't want to be like, hey, I'm leaving school on the move and then have somebody come pick them up yeah. on the way home. This seems Maybe like a terrible old- idea. I don't need to auto tell people everything that's happening. If it matters, you'll know. All right. Will you be using this show? No. Hope, you're Gen Z slash millennial. Will you be using this? No. Okay. So I guess just leaving this, what could go wrong? Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. All right. A new beneficial tool comes from Google where there is a new change of address tool in the new search console. So if you are ever moving a site from a domain to a new domain, you can use this. It's not on the old version of search console. It is there in the new version So this isn't for changing pages specifically, but for changing an address. So I like this overall, pretty good. Pro tip, Shep, you're somebody that is in the process of potentially moving, is that correct? If you are moving here in the US and you submit your information to the post office, you get a ton of really good coupons. Really? Things from like Lowe's, Home Depot, 20% off. That's cool. So if you've got an address that you can put in and you have a big purchase coming up, Put that in, you'll get 20% off coupons. Ooh. Really cool. On to some upcoming trends. There's a new article from someone that's been watching brands here. (laughs) (laughs) Brandwatch.com has an article where they break down quite a bit of technology and purchasing information by brand. They look at regional preferences and more. If this is a brand, you may love this if they cover the industry that your company or your clients are in. They run through things like grocery, auto, hospitality, and they talk about what matters most to people there. I was really surprised at some of the answers that were given in this survey. I think mainly on the um, consumer electronics where it had shifted where people cared more about the uh, quality of something than the price, but then in other industries, the price mattered the most. So it's really interesting if you are in-house or have clients Um, Something definitely to bookmark, check out in the shout outs. Next up, the Creative Commons has a new WordPress plugin that makes it easier to attribute and license content. I love this. 
but I'm a bit dubious. So let me talk about what's going to happen here. The plugin is simply called Creative Commons. Funny they didn't get creative with the name here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Creative Commons. It is an upgrade version of the old plugin that used to be called WP License, and it's awesome. You can find different content that is available to use on your blog, and you can use this. My only concern is that this is almost too easy. You can take these images and put them right on your, on your site, but there are tons of patent trolls out there now, especially on the image side. Mm -hmm. They'll try to shake you down for copyright <laughs> enforcement. <laughs> and if you didn't actually buy something, if you're just like, oh, hey, Mr. Law Firm, Ms. Law Firm. Ms. Ms. Oh, Ms. Ms. Law Firm. I use Creative Commons WordPress plugin. Just go check the data. How are they going to know? I, I still think it makes sense to make your own graphics yeah. when you can. And if you can't, buy the license for that. Or sign up for some service that has multiple licenses so you can download that. I like the paper trail. I don't like it so much to be like, oh, I trust blindly in this plugin. But you may. So that's why we feature it here <laughs> on the show. Next up, Google is taking security even more seriously. Just when you didn't think they could, Google is now doubling down and will gradually start ensuring that any secure pages or HTTPS pages will only be able to lo load secure resources. So if you have an image now that is not secure on a secure site, it's not a problem. Come Chrome version 79, it will be a problem. And there's a plan in place to make it so that if your site, your page that you're looking at, your URL is secure, you won't be able to load anything that's not. So make it a priority if you haven't to make sure everything you're doing is completely secure. Forcing your hand, you're gonna have all these broken images, broken things on your site if you are not secure. So invest, it will be worth it. I can't believe we're already at Chrome 79. I know. It's like those it's, now CDs. It is like, like now CDs. Now I was trying 314. To yeah. Yeah. Now Pi. Pi now. I like that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Next up from George Wynn over, over at the Husky headquarters at Search Engine Land. Yoast SEO users will be opted in to all of the snippet features, the new ones, by default. So Yoast announced 12.2 will now use the new snippet features. So head to the show notes to see what those updates will be. And next up, keeping it Google here, Google starts a new subscriptions lab for local publishers that will develop paid content. So this is part of the year old Google News initiative. And there is now going to be a GNI Google News initiative subscriptions lab that is a six month program developed in partnership with the local media association the LMA, I just want to say LMAFO after <laughs> you get to LMA, and FTI Consulting, and this is going to include eight different publishers in North America. The big thing here is that Google subscription that we talked about about a year ago, where publishers are going to try, that this one, the arduous process, I guess, if you read the article, they talk through it, that getting into this program, implementing everything is, is a bigger task than most folks thought, but... They are launching this news initiative, and there are eight different publishers. They have not released the names. Check it out, the full article over on Digiday if you're a publisher. And lastly here, Google Assistant is now testing Duplex to help users buy movie tickets. So if, in case you did not know, Duplex is Google's automated concierge feature where you can talk to a machine and have it perform tasks for you. So now Google has confirmed that the test is being used for movie ticket booking sites. So if you are somebody that may want to book via a virtual robot, this is perfect for you. My only thing is most folks that use assistance and things like that don't go to the movies. Yeah, it's a different demographic, I'd say. Different demographic, other than Hope here. Mm -hmm. Hope goes to the movies once a week. And what's wrong with Fandango? Well, you'd have to, who calls people? Do you, have you ever called to register a movie ticket? No. People, wait, that's what this is replacing? Yes. Who would do that? Hope, you go to the movies, what? On average, on a yearly basis, maybe what? 
let's say a year, 52 weeks in a year, you probably go I probably 500 go, times. I probably go three times a month. Okay. Do you call? No. Okay. This would also be an issue because now all the movie theaters, you have to pick your seats. How are they going to explain where your seat is? Yeah, that's true. You can reserve without it looking right at it online, which is really nice. We don't need this. We don't need phone calls for mm-hmm. movies. All right, and that wraps up our lightning round of news for the week, and it brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working, where we talk about what is going on in our IRL work. Good, bad, or otherwise this week. Jeff, what's been happening with your accounts lately? So I have this account that I was making a lot of new campaigns for this week. They're all display campaigns and they had um, campaign level conversion settings. And I was just copying my existing campaign and pasting it in editor and making my changes. And every time I pasted a new campaign and uploaded it back online, it got rid of my campaign level conversion settings what? and reverted back to the account. Okay. I thought you were going to say something positive and I was going to have a warning because no. <laughs> copying those campaigns really messes with your conversion sometimes mm-hmm. if you've got things like paying for conversions instead of paying for clicks. So if you're actually paying for conversions, it will not transfer when you copy that over. Even Trans- the settings. This is like a different type of conversion. It's an e-commerce thing where uh, otherwise in the account we could be getting leads and it's just getting rid of my campaign level settings and reverting them to the account default. That's crazy. Which could be really bad if I didn't notice really it right bad. away. Yeah. So anytime you copy and paste anything in editor, I feel like you need to check your campaign settings. All right. And in my accounts this week, I'm going to talk about Google ads and the online version. You may know that you can hit G and T and pull up a quick search tool and get to things, I use it all the time looking at change history. I didn't know that there were more shortcuts that could pull up different sections of your account. So if you're somewhere and you put in something like GC, all you have to do is hit those two keys in the web version, you'll go right to campaigns. GJ goes to ad groups. That's awesome. GA goes to ads, which is pretty cool. If you can acclimate yourself to this, and I've been really trying to, you can save a lot of time. It's like Photoshop. If you don't have those short keys, Mm -hmm. you're kind of worthless compared to people that know how to do it. So check it out. We'll put a link there of all the actual keyboard shortcuts in Google Ads. There's a lot. There's a lot that are actually there. So check that out. And now it's time for this week's WTH. This is a heck-worthy piece of commentary It's extra egregious from the digital marketing space. And this week, we bring to you Bill Lambert. In case you didn't know, there is a big controversy in the digital marketing space about a person that described himself as a Googler named (laughs) Bill Lambert. I don't even know how to report on this. Yeah, he wasn't really saying he was a Googler, but he kept making these predictions yeah, yes, he was an insider. That I should say a Google seem, yeah. insider. And that, upon further inspection, sometimes he was right and sometimes he wasn't. So there were stories across the board. You can go over to searchandjournal.com, check out a story from Roger Monty that breaks it down saying, Bill Lambert is not real. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's in the WTH. But apparently on Twitter, there was somebody named Get Schwifty that said, Google's Bill Lambert. Today, many will see poor metrics, high bounce rates, and low session data. The filters are being reapplied. Next week could be big. The data will be analyzed. And if they think they can push it harder, they will. And then John Mueller from Google said, they're not from Google. So Barry Schwartz went in and did a pseudo investigative dive into Bill Lambert, looked at some of the IP addresses, as to the comments on his blog, tried to break it down, And determine that he's probably just a troll, not a Googler. It's just crazy that this is the news. But then there was an article about the article, Bill Lambert isn't real. He's in the comments, like trolling everyone still. It's so funny. he was. And then somebody changed their name instead of being Bill Lambert. I think it was Lil Bambert or something (laughs) like that. They switched it around. And then my favorite thing, and I think this is one of my new favorite memes in general, is Barry Schwartz over Search Engine Roundtable outlined this entire process. 
talked about the IP addresses, talked about the fact that it's probably a troll, ran through everything possible, and somebody responded, sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's one of my top five memes. The sir, this is, ma'am, this is a Wendy's. Sir, this is a Wendy's meme. Did you see the, search, the change.org petition? Yes, there's a change.org <laughs> petition to have Bill Lambert out himself or themselves. To have him sit down for an interview with Barry Schwartz, I saw. So here's the question. That's what I want. The change.orgs are kind of like a GoFundMe. Right? You try to get to a certain level. Did you look and see how many people the change.org was trying to get to? I haven't looked in 24. Oh, I didn't even see the goal. The, no. the goal was 100 people. <laughs> <laughs> they could sign so that we could out Bill Lambert and there could be a sit down conversation. How many do you think they achieved as of Friday? 17. Nine. Oh, now <laughs> so, I want to sign it. I think Bill Lambert's going to keep going behind the scenes yeah. there. But WTH. He's Bill. in his armchair somewhere just sitting back and laughing at all this. Yeah, I love my guy, laugh. Bill Lambert. Bill. We miss you. <laughs> hey, you got open invite here at Marketing Your Clock. If you want to hop on, we'll get yeah. you on the blower and we'll have a nice conversation and see if you're real or we not. We could put the shadow over his face. Yeah, and where it's just change his voice. The voice where it's just so low, it sounds like an ogre under a bridge. <laughs> yes. We'll actually turn you into a troll. We'll turn you into a real bridge troll. How about that? I would love that. All right. And that brings us to this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool is not an endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something that we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. So this week's cool tool is InLinks. You can find it at inlinks.net. We will share it in our show notes. And it looks at your site on a topic basis instead of a keyword basis. So it really figures out what it's about, what you're trying to get out there, and makes awesome recommendations on internal linking, external linking, um, new topics you can talk about, landing pages, all kinds of stuff based on your website. And there is a really useful video right on the landing page. It's like six minutes long that gives you a full overview. So this is an awesome tool for anyone who wants to optimize their content. And Check it, it out in our show notes. And it will give you 20 pages for free. And this is spearheaded by Dixon Jones, a longtime search vet. And that brings us to this week's must-read marketing article of the week. An article so detailed, so in-depth, so advanced that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. Today's article comes from Luke Smith. I couldn't find a Twitter handle for Luke, but Luke is big on Facebook. And if you search on Facebook for Simply Converting, you'll find a group, Simply Converting, that you can follow along with. And Luke has an article called 12 Techniques to Reduce Your Facebook Ad Spend. And what Luke does is run through a variety of aspects to a Facebook account. He talks about what you need to do before you even start. The campaign section checks that are required. What to do with your ad sets. Your overall ad setup checks. And then on-site landing page checks. And I'm going to read one of the many points that Luke had. And this is from the article itself. I've seen conversion rates vary as much as 20% simply due to the type of audience being used. Here's some actual landing page conversion rates for a webinar that illustrate this variation. Renovation in interest, 17% conversion rate. Reno shows, 17%. Webinar registrations look like 29% conversion rate. Course members look like 26. Video, 15. Page enablers, 26. So on and so forth. He breaks it all down. Then he says, for conversion campaigns, I like to start with 1% lookalikes until I identify the top performers. From there, you can test the 1% to 2% and 2% plus audience sizes. All that being said, it's great content. So if you are trying to do better with your Facebook ads account, head on over to socialmediaexaminer.com and read this article from Luke Smith. Thank you, Luke. All right, that does it for today's show. And while our podcast is ending, if you like podcasts, Search Engine Journal has the Search Engine Journal show where Danny Goodwin interviews a bunch of SEOs called Ask an SEO. If you haven't heard it yet, check out the Brett Tabke. That's my recommendation. Runs through how PubCon got started, why they moved away from affiliates. It's a great, great listen Check that out over on the Search Engine Journal show. Yes, we are so excited to be a part of the Search Engine Journal podcast network. Thank you, Optio. 
Remember, you can head on over to optio.com slash marketing o'clock for a free trial. Not just a normal free trial. Six weeks, absolutely free. It is now officially not marketing o'clock. Remember, you can catch everything from today's show on marketingoclock.com. While you're there, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week.